uh, the good sound of Elvis Aaron Presley, taking us all the way back to 1962. Elvis Presley, the king has always had a way with a ballad, and this, his show closer for many years, proves it based on the French Placide d'Amour and featuring Hawaiian sounding guitar fills. Elvis insisted on recording this for his Blue Hawaii film. It surrounds Elvis's quiet vocal majesty with equal musical wonder and uh, something many of his other ballads failed to do. Absolutely sensational stuff. 27 minutes before 9 o'clock here at Coast FM. As we mentioned previously, our uh, usual lady that answers the phone, Di, isn't in tonight. Unfortunately, uh, couldn't get the car started. Something about a flat battery. So we miss her greatly not answering the phones tonight. The phones are all lighting up tonight. But uh, we're doing the best we can. We hope you're enjoying our countdown here in Australia of the year of 1962. And it's uh, welcome to the program, Martin Cilia. How are you, Martin? Good, Mark. Good. Yourself? Oh, I'm great, mate. It's been a pretty great week out there right across uh, the New South Wales area, hasn't it? It's been a fantastic week, actually. It's great. Just before winter hits us, I guess. Absolutely. And uh, how have you been, yourself, musically? Musically, very busy. Yeah, promoting the new album and uh, playing a few gigs, travelling a little bit. It's been good. Okay, that's great. So, Martin, of course, uh, we last time uh, we spoke to you, you just released Revenge of the Surf Guitar, and I believe that went well for you. And uh, you uh, played a couple of gigs on the strength, did a few gigs on the strength of that. Tell us a little bit about your latest release. As a matter of fact, we had it as we'd been featuring it as our AMRAP Australian Artist of the Week for the past seven days. The album, The Odd One Out. You want to tell us a little bit about how that came about and uh, the title of the album. Okay, because the last album I did was called Revenge of the Surf Guitar, it was very true to the surf guitar style. So I thought I'd just do something out of the style slightly, but still keeping it mainly instrumental. And, uh, and I mixed up the songs so it's not all one style as the previous album. I thought I'd just do something almost opposite to what I did before, um, just to see how it goes. So that's how, kind of how I arrived at The old one out was because all the songs are different and... Um, it's the, the odd one out in what I, what I normally do. Okay. Now, Martin, you want to tell us, obviously, uh, you know, a major influence on your, um, your guitar playing and career has been, I guess, and reading your bio has been people like Hank B. Marvin, etc. You want to tell us a little bit about that, that background coming to Australia and uh, those musical influences? Yes. Um, well, I came to Australia when I was nine years old, coming from England. And uh, I lived in Perth for 20, 20, 20 something years. And um, Perth has a very English, a uh, very big English population. And uh, therefore, Beatles, Stones, Shadows, Cliff Richard, all that uh, are quite popular there. They brought music over with them. And I learned, um, started hearing the Shadow songs when I was about 10 or 11 years old and uh, just started imitating them. And that's how I sort of started doing that. And then um, being in Perth, it's very isolated. So you, you didn't see a lot of new music coming through at the time. Um, this was in the early 70s. And, uh, yeah, so I gravitated towards the instrumental stuff. And, uh, and it sort of stuck. Which is, which is a good thing, I think. Well, it is. I mean, uh, instrumental music to me, of course, I was around um, as a little guy in uh, the early 60s, 1963, which was a pretty big year for surf music, as we all know. And of course, Probably the biggest. Uh, absolutely. And of course, before that, I still remember as an eight-year-old where I was. I know it seems sad, and I know a lot of people would think I need to get a life, but uh, I still remember exactly where I was when I heard the shadow of the, uh, the Apache, the shadows on a little uh, five-watt radio for the first time, a little mono radio, yeah. and it just blew me away. Yeah, I remember hearing that, hearing that same song in mono on a little stereo, a little, a little, sorry, a little mono uh, portable record player. It sounded fantastic on that. Yeah, well, we went and saw them, actually. We went and saw Cliff and the Shads this year, the guys down at the uh, Entertainment Centre, and I can tell you, as far as I'm concerned, anyway, they've lost absolutely nothing. No, they're brilliant. I saw them myself, and they were just... Uh, you know, Mac, it was just uh, so professional, and they still got it. They absolutely have. And I believe you uh, recorded with uh, Dave Warner's band, Dave Warner from the Suburbs, for a little while. Yes, I played with Dave. Um, I've been playing uh, with Dave's uh, band for maybe 20 years now. Mm -hmm. um, we don't play much anymore. When we do, it's, it's good fun. Last time we played, we played Perth about a year ago. 
and uh, it was a, yeah, it was really good fun to work with Dave. So he's a, a very original Australian artist. Oh yeah, absolutely, and. I'm looking at your website and your web pages, Martin. You've got a pretty big selection of guitars, haven't you? Oh, I like my guitars. Um, <laughs> yes, I've always um, had a bit of an expensive taste for guitars, and uh, luckily I bought them, bought most of them before the prices went, uh, you know, up with the real estate. So um, I, yeah, I get to use them on the recordings, which is always fun. Absolutely. How do you, uh, obviously, it, does it come all down to sound? You obviously, pra- you're doing, uh, checking out the, t- you, the, s- the tunes you want to r- record and uh, check out the sound and the tone you want to get before you actually put, put it on the, uh, on the tape. Yeah, exactly. Each guitar has a, a distinct character. Um, so I try and go with what the song asks for. If I'm doing a surf guitar type recording, I'll stick with one or two guitars. It's probably, it's probably about one or two guitars I mostly use for that. But once I start diversifying in acoustic guitars, I have a number of acoustic guitars that all sound different. And also some Gibson guitars I use quite a bit that that sound different as well. But yeah, each one's got its own character. Well, I'm looking at a couple of photos of you here holding it, um, a couple of different guitars, and I believe one of the photos is a jazz master, a Fender jazz master, or is it a broadcaster? I'm not sure. It'd probably be a Jaguar. Can you give me a colour? Uh, well, from this faded little photograph, it looks as though it's uh, a, a deep maroon colour. Um, like, it's a Stratocaster. Yeah, yeah, Strat, no? Yeah. Uh, it's got, well, I can see it's got the three switches on the top. The slide switches. Okay, that's probably the uh, oh, three slide switches. Well, yeah, those little, t- not the, yeah, the ones that, like, uh, I think the Burns, Burns Baby Baldwin had the same sort of switches. Ah, that's going back, isn't it? Yeah. Burns Guitars. Um, it's probably the Jaguar. Oh, the Jaguar. Okay. Mm. Yeah, and w- what would you use that for? I use that for the surf, yeah. mainly for the, if I want like a more of an American surf sound. Okay. I'll use that. It's got a slightly shorter scowl length, and it's a slightly brighter guitar, so I'll use that as opposed to other fenders. And talking about surf music, you've been a part of the Atlantics for a few years, haven't you? Yes, I've uh, been doing that for just over 10 years now, and uh, I think I've done three or four albums with them. Just great, and we've done a few tours and lots of gigs. That's, that's always good. And how do you find uh, Martin the reception you get? Let's just for a moment talk about the Atlantics. Uh, the reception you get with these the guys that have been around for over forty years, you know. And uh, well, of course, you played at the basement, I believe, in January. How how well received was that? That was really well received. It's um it's interesting because the band, being instrumentally, uh, the band still uses the same guitars and the same equipment as the band had in 1963. And if you're a vocal band, your voice changes over time. But really, the band sounds very similar now to what it did in 1963, so so I've been told. Um, So it's interesting that that, the sound can still be captured. I think some some of the songs have got a little bit slower as everyone gets older, but generally it's it's all all still there. But the reaction's good, especially the younger people. Uh, We had quite a few younger bands come along to have a look at us, and uh, they they were very, very impressed, I think. And we saw uh, we saw the Atlantics at the uh, Long Way to the Top series of concerts a few years ago, and that that sound it still uh, it just seemed to burst out of the speakers. It was unbelievable sitting in the audience. Yeah, that, w- that was a really good tour. Um, we we really enjoyed that tour, and um, I just remember every time we hit the stage, um, everyone's head in the audience would turn and look at us if they weren't really paying attention. And um, the sound of uh, the band really you know, sticks out. It, it's just one of those things. Is that it's uh, balance of people that just works. Mm. Now, looking at your album, The Odd One Out, quite a few uh, originals. You've written most of them on here, and uh, we'll be playing another one of those very, very shortly. West of Bondi, we open tonight's program, actually, Martin, with uh, your version of the old Beatles thing, Cry for a Shadow. Does that take you back a few years, does it? It does. Um, that song's come up a couple of times, but we've never uh, came up with the Atlantic once, but we never actually recorded it. And um, we were doing a, uh, a documentary, Delightful Rain, and uh, Cry for Shadow was mentioned then. We never actually did it. So when it came, up, came time to do this album, I thought I'd have a crack at it. Good stuff. Now, Martin, when you're writing, you know, yeah. it's, is, it, is it 
some people tell me when I've spoken to uh, performers in the past, something just all, all of a sudden spurs their imagination or they hear something or someone else is playing and they think, oh, that reminds me of something else and they immediately get pen to paper. Is that the same with you or it, how, does, how do these things come about? It varies, but generally a sound or I'll hear something or I'll just play something on the guitar, I'll play a chord or a series of notes and I go, oh, I think that's... Um that could go somewhere and then I'll just develop it and I'll either write it down or I'll, I'll um, try and remember it or I'll record it on a little little tape recorder. Um, but generally, you, you, you just don't know when it's going to come, when you get the idea and um, and often you get ideas they don't really go anywhere but um, uh, the, I think the trick is to recognise when you've got something that's worth pursuing. Yeah, so, yeah, unbelievable. So you've got a mixture on here, listening to your album, you've got a mixture on here of electric and acoustic. What do you prefer to play yourself? Um, I probably play mostly electric guitar, but I, I really enjoy playing acoustic, probably because I don't do it that much. Mm -hmm. But it's, um, <laughs> playing acoustic can be hard work sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Look, um, cries for a shadow. Obviously, I, I was reading somewhere, it was a bit of a tongue-in-cheek. Um, Beatles look at uh, the Shadows performance when they were taken to see them many years ago over in England. Do you know anything about that? Well, I heard it was a, a bit of a John Lennon and George Harrison uh, gag. They were just having a joke, um, you know, with the Shadows sound at the time, the early 60s being so big in England and Europe. Um, and the Beatles, I mean, the Beatles were obviously very aware of, of the Shadows, and I think they even knew them at the time. And, uh, and everyone wanted to be Hank Martin. Every guitar player in England wanted to be Hank Martin. So... Um, I think they were just a little, um, making a little, little light of it. Really, I think that's what happened. Mm. For you, which which uh, track on on your album is uh, it means means uh, a little more than the others? Which uh, particular track just means a little more than the others, either in the way you wrote it or the particular uh, chord structure, etc. Oh, that's that's a real hard one because they're all so varied. They all come from different places, and I. Actually, with this album, I didn't record it all at the same time. The songs were done over a period of a few years. Some of them are just demos that I had left over that wouldn't fit on other projects. So generally, you, you like the last songs or song that you've written. Mm. So I try not to think like that. But I think on there is a song called The Same Song Remains. Um, I quite like the idea of, uh, uh, of that one. That's, um, that sort of came out okay. And uh, the one you're about to play, um, West of Bondi, that's getting a really good response as well. Good, good. Now, Martin, where can uh, people... Obviously, we can catch up on your website, and I'll ask you to uh, fill in the folks on your particular website address. Yes, it's martincilia.com. That's M-A-R-T-I-N-C-I-L-I-A. And that'll give everybody an idea of your background as well as uh, some upcoming gigs. Where's uh, your next? When's your next job coming up? When's your next gig? Um, the next public performance is a good question. I think I'm doing uh, next Friday at Jermoyne Sports Club here in Sydney. Okay. Any chance you'll uh, you may come to the Central Coast in the near future, or have we got to uh, uh, sort of nudge you a little bit? Well, I'm hoping to get the Atlantics up the Central Coast, Newcastle. Uh, the band's about due to come up that way, hasn't been, been up that way for years. So hopefully with the Atlantics we can do that before the end of the year. Oh, that would be excellent. We'll see if uh, you guys, if that's the case, uh, like to come in and talk to us one night. Definitely. Absolutely. Martin, it's been an ple absolute pleasure talking to you tonight and uh, all about your new album, The uh, Odd One Out. And uh, what, what's, what's in store for Martin Cilia in the future? We've got some other thoughts. I know you've just released this, but uh, another one coming out sometime in the near future? Uh, yes, I'll, um, I'll probably do a, uh, a surf album uh, next, which is what I planned to do before I release this last album. I'll probably do more of a surf album, but we'll get, more, get the Stratocasters out and the Jag out and... Uh, and turn the reverb up and uh, have a bit of go, a go at that. That won't be until later in the year, though. And what is it? What do you think it is about surf music? I mean, for me, 40-odd years down the track, I, I, I still get an absolute buzz of, of uh, hearing, you know, Dick Dale, original Atlantic's material when I put on The Crusher or whatever it might be. I still get an absolute buzz out of it. What do you think it is? Well, I think there's an energy there. And uh, with instrumental music, you don't have words to carry you. You've really got to... Um uh, make the sounds exciting. I think that's a big part of it. Uh, and also, when, when the band, like The Crusher, well, we've antics recorded The Crusher, the band was younger, had a lot, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of energy, and uh, it just sounds exciting, I think.
I think that might be the case. Martin, it's been a, a great pleasure talking to you again tonight. Thank you, Martin. Uh, it's been about 18 months, I think, or two years, so the way time flies and uh, me getting older and more forgetful um, since we spoke to you. And uh, I'm going to play uh, West of Bondi. You want to tell us a little bit about that particular track before I play? West of Bondi, I wrote with a friend of mine, Jeff Cripps. Um, we uh, just wrote that song one evening. He has a recording studio here in Sydney. I was over there and uh, said, I've got an idea for a song. And we uh, wrote that sort of finished that up together and recorded it and um, it's on the album. It's, uh, it's sort of uh, between surf and uh, maybe uh, a little bit of western in there. Good stuff. Martin, thanks very much for talking to me tonight here on Baby Boomers Coast FM. Uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you again sometime in the near future and uh, maybe see you up here either, uh, in, as a solo or um, doing your own stuff and from the album or with the Atlantic sometime uh, you know, towards the end of the year. Yeah, I look forward to that. Thanks very much, Martin. Thank you, Mark. All the very best. Bye. Bye. Sound of Martin Cilia there from the album The Odd One Out, which has been up until uh, yesterday our AMRAP artist and album of the week. From the album The Odd One Out, that was a little track that Martin co wrote. 
uh, was it a friend of his, Mr. Cripps, and called West of Bondi. Some great guitar playing on there. If you want to get yourself a copy, go on and have a look at Martin's site. You'll be able to order one onto the or the Bombora music site as well. And uh, as we said, the uh, Martin Cilia website, www. M-A-R-T-I-N-C-I-L-I-A dot com. Have a look at it. Some good things on there. And hopefully, as Martin mentioned, we might see the Atlantics on the Central Coast over the next six months. What do you reckon about that, Uncle Bob? Mate, I'll be the first one to get down there and buy a ticket from Ticket Tech or wherever they're selling them. Uh, Martin <laughs> Silly and uh, I don't think Bosco's in it anymore, is he? No, Bosco's not in it anymore. Bosco Hood would be there. Yeah, Bosco's been doing a, uh, a Johnny Cash show for the last three years. Yeah, mm. yeah uh, because uh, we ran into Peter Hood and uh, Bosco go down at the Reesby Workers when they had that big and a big rock and roll revival about 10 years ago and uh, absolutely fantastic guys to talk to. They and were. I'm sure Martin Celia, as uh, uh, he indicated on air just a moment ago in that interview, that uh, he uh, will, would also like to come in here and sound like a real gentleman himself. Absolutely. Hope you enjoyed that interview with Martin. Um, all about his uh, latest release and uh, where he is in the music industry. A couple of weeks' time, we're hoping to uh, talk to some of the guys talking about surf music out of a new band called The Break. We'll tell you about a little bit more about that as time approaches. Let's ask that question again, mate.